Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Now today I'm going to be um, teaching you a simple but effective way of um, how to drift eggs. So basically how to drift eggs. What you want to start with is have a good combo. So reel wise enough um, spool capacity to hold a good 150 meters of braid um, and a rod that's capable of casting quite far distances. Now leader wise um, oh, it doesn't really matter anything from six to eight even ten pound and also three-way swivel. Um, I use the Pat Swift jigging three-way swivels and a drop shot sinker. Now fly-wise that's the big choice. That's the one that's going to catch you the fish. Now you want to think about what time of year it is, what they're feeding on, what the water clarity is like. I could go on but I'm just going to keep it simple. Now I'm going to start off, I'm in front of the cages and I'm going to look um, for where the current line is. Now there's two current lines, there's a big one that comes in front of me and there's one out near the cages. What I like to do is normally get out just past halfway so you're in that other current zone. So always have your finger, your index finger with the line on it and you want to put a good cast in just like that you're over halfway and you're in the bite zone now what you want to do let a little bit of line out and then put that braid in your index finger and walk down and mend that line till it's tight now I always walk downstream um, so well, you can't walk upstream anyway but walk downstream have that line in your index finger and always feel because you can get more feel and you always get a nice drift too now as I'm saying while I'm walking downstream you want to keep your rod low, not high always nice and low so you've got a good hook set that you can pull to the side always keep in contact with your fly and rig as well because some of these fish they'll either destroy your fly or you won't even realise that you've got one on So always keep in contact, that is the main key. Now I'm just hitting the bottom now. What I find with weight selection, you've always got to think about what that current's doing and how you want to get down. Now what I'd normally do is I always try to get his way with the lightest weight as possible. So you get that nice smooth natural drift where compared if you were using a heavy weight you would be sticking to the bottom and it would not look natural at all and then once you feel like your drift is complete you can wind you can wind in and then repeat and you can cover your water you can figure out where you want to be fishing and what flies you want to be using now I've got a snag, so that'll happen. I don't know what's going on here. There we go, got it. But I don't think I would have got my fly. Either I got my fly and I've got no sinker, or I've got the sinker and I've got no fly one of the two got my sinker and I've got my fly that doesn't normally happen often, it's normally I lose one of the two also another thing to think about when you want to catch fish bite times um, in the morning and, at, and late at night in the evening see the sun's just gone down behind those hills over there, the southern alps and the fish are just starting to jump and a guy down below me actually just caught an 8 pound rainbow trout so shows there that the fish do come on bite at certain times 
but you've got to put in the time and effort to get rewards. Now you'll notice with my setup that I run <coughs> my three-way swivel here and off the middle I, it's where I have my fly. Now I have my uh, leader for my fly a lot longer than what my sinker is. Simply due, I've found oh, the longer you have your leader to where your sinker is, um, the more, more bites you get, better drift and it looks a lot more natural. So that's another tip as well. Now I'm going to walk back up, do that drift again and hopefully I can pick up a fish. Now before it gets too dark I'm going to show you guys um, the tackle I use for egg rolling or egg fishing as some people call it. So here we have um, the drop shot sinker that I use for uh, egg rolling or egg fishing. Basically with the length of it, it stops it from getting snagged as easy as what like a ball sinker would or a banana sinker. Now here we have a mixture of eggs, uh, down below I have um, some clear drift ones, as you can tell the top one has been my favourite lately, then on the other side we've got a few manic tackle ones, and then we've got some soft rubber ones that I've made at my home myself, but basically lately um, the fish have been picky and they've been wanting different colours so it's good to have a large variety. Here we have the Pat Swift three way swivel. I use this swivel simply because it doesn't tangle um, your main line and your leader together as much. And then they are strong and they are perfect for egg rolling at the canals. Then for leader, I use Black Magic Tackle fluorocarbon and 8 pound in 55 meters, and it is 0.24 millimeter in diameter. Well, thanks for watching this video, guys. Um, something different a lot of people have been hassling me to do it lately so I thought I'd get it out of the way while I'm up here so you guys can learn how to egg fish like how I learned so until next time tight lines team and have a good one